Omar ibn Abdul Aziz had a unique characteristic. He used to sit down with the people of knowledge all the time. They would come to teach him, but instead, they would be the ones learning from him. In fact, Omar was a strong and reliable narrator of hadith. At the time, the ahadith, that is, the tradition of the Prophet, وسلم, were communicated exclusively orally. For this reason, Omar ordained Imam Zuhuri to collect and compile them in written format. The first complete work will come as the Muwatta of Imam Malik, but this is where it began. And actually, several hadith scholars said that for every book of hadith that is compiled today, the reward will go to Omar II and Imam Zuhri. One day, as he was discussing with scholars in his court, he heard of a specific hadith that moved him to tears. This hadith is narrated in Sunan al-Tirmidhi and goes like this. The poor people from the Muslims will be the first to enter Jannah by half a day. When he heard this hadith, Omar wanted to know more about these people. They told him, Ya Amir al-Mu'minin, these are the people that no one cares about. No one opens door for them. No one gives their daughter to them. And they wear very simple clothing. Upon hearing this, Omar literally started to cry. I'm afraid I will not be from them, he said. The people look up to me. Doors are open to me. Daughters of kings are given to me, he added, referring to his wife Fatima, bin to Abdul Malik. So, as we mentioned last time, Omar, at the time of his Khilafah, had a single piece of clothing. One day, he arrived late at the Friday prayer. They asked him, Ya Amir Muslimin, why is it that you are late today? He answered, I only have this pair of clothing, and I was waiting for them to dry up. At this point, they advised him to get at least another pair for the Friday prayer and for the Eid which he ended up doing to respect the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ of wearing nice clothes for those two occasions. Omar ibn Abdul Aziz was forced by his own people to take a salary, which, by the way, he insisted on returning at his death. He did not even have enough silver for his children's clothes for Eid. His wife asked him to go to Baytul Mal, that is, the bank of the Muslims, and ask for a loan. And Omar had put in charge some very pious people that were not afraid to stand up to the leader if what he asked for was not legislated. So when he asked for a loan, in return, they wanted a guarantee that he would pay them back. And since he had no convincing answer, they refused to grant the loan. Because Omar ibn Abdul Aziz had gained the pleasure of Allah, that caused him to be loved by the people up until today. We still read and talk about him 1300 years later. And we have to understand that this is not for no reason. During his time, the Ummah was flourishing with great victories. There was no corruption, no oppression. The masses gained economic prosperity. Humayd ibn Zanjawi, in his Kitab al-Amwal, wrote that people were walking around with money of zakat, the mandatory charity that every Muslim is bound to give every year. But no one was there to take it. Abu Ubaid Qasim ibn Salam mentioned in, in his book that is also named Kitab al-Amwal, Omar wrote to Abdul Hamid ibn Abdul Rahman, who was in charge of Baytul Mal, the bank of the Muslims, to spend on the needy. And he wrote back that they already gave to the needy and still have some money left. Omar then asked him to take some more money and use it to equip the army. He replied the same thing. The army is equipped and we still have more money left over. Then Omar asked him to give to those who want to get married. Again, same reply. There was still money left. Finally, Omar asked him to give some money to the Jews and Christians that lived in that land. So we talked about the piety of Omar ibn al-Aziz and his asceticism. But he was also a very good diplomat. He knew how to talk to people and how to react to difficult situations. For example, at his time, a group from the Khawarij from Khorasan was calling for takfir on the Umayyads. And for those unfamiliar with the term takfir, this basically means excommunicating someone from the religion. The Khawarij at that time, which is a sect of the Muslims, are known for being very prompt to do takfir on Muslim leaders for their unpious behavior. 
when Umar heard about them, instead of sending an army out to Khorasan, he sent them a letter. In the letter, he said, Come here, you present your arguments and evidence, and if you are right, I will follow you. I will present mine, and if I am right, you will follow me. The man from Khorasan took two talented debaters with him, and he asked them to debate Umar and trick him with sophistry. They went and asked him, Why don't you send the curse of Allah upon the disbelievers of Umayyah? The two Khorasan debaters obviously could not say outright that Umar himself was a kafir, a disbeliever. But Umar, being part of the Umayyad family, knew that this was implied. He asked them in return, Pharaoh, Fir'aun, is a clear-cut kafir. When is the last time you sent curse on him? He added, Whoever testifies that there is no other god than Allah, and that Muhammad is his last prophet, and whoever establishes the Salat, believes in the pillars of Islam, they are Muslim, unless they commit clear act of disbelief. An example of such act would be leaving off the Salat. As we all know, man taraka salat faqad kafar. Whoever leaves the Salat has disbelieved. So he answered all questions with arguments from the Quran and the Sunnah, the prophetic tradition. One of the two debaters realized he was in the wrong and asked for forgiveness. The other did not and went back to Khorasan.